Okay, we're back, and this time we're looking at um, actually a feature of calculus that every so often comes up in our physics class. This is something called the chain rule. And what the chain rule is, is something that we use to figure out what's going on with derivatives of slightly more complex functions. Um, uh, some people might even call them compound function. Uh, like I said, we, we don't have to do this very often, but on occasion, so it's a good thing to know. And in your studies of calculus, certainly you'll do a lot with this. But uh, what I mean by a compound function is something where you have a function of a function. Or the way I like to think about it is an outside function operating on an inside function. Now, if you're not familiar with the chain rule, you might be scratching your head saying, what in the world are outside and inside functions and all this? Well. I like to use examples. Um, you can see it pretty quickly when you look at examples and we can kind of define what, what we mean by a compound function outside versus inside functions. So imagine you want to try to find the derivative of, of this thing. Our function is the square root of the quantity x squared plus 3x. Um, now if, if this is new to you, if the chain rule is new to you, that looks like it's pretty tough. But with the chain rule, it makes it much easier. Now, what I mean by a compound function, what I mean by an outside versus an inside function, is, is this. The outside function, in this case, is the square root. Okay. Um, the inside function is that quantity x squared plus 3x. On their own, if, if these were all alone, we could take derivatives of them. But when they're combined together like this, it's a little more of a challenge. Now, if you can identify your outside and inside functions, the chain rule actually becomes pretty simple. Chain rule says that the derivative of one of these things is the derivative of the outside function times the derivative of the inside function. So in this case, if I rewrite the square root as the one half power, we can, we can use our normal derivative rules to figure this out. Okay, so for example, What's the derivative of a square root? Well, uh, for something to the one-half power, the one-half comes down. And now we've, we've got the square root of what? Well, x squared plus 3x. Um, but what you do is you subtract one from your power. So that would be to the negative one-half power. That's the derivative of the outside function. That's the derivative of the square root. OK? but Chain rule says now we have to multiply that by the derivative of the inside function, which is x squared plus 3x. And that by itself, we know how to find the derivative as well. The derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of 3x, I think that's as 3 times x to the first power. Now we have 3 times 1 times x to the zeroth power. Okay. So what this means then, if we were to rewrite this, is you'd have uh, 2x plus 3 divided by 2 times the square root of x squared plus 3x. Oops. And that would be the derivative. Okay. Uh, another example might be something like this. 1 over a quantity, okay, uh, in this case 3x cubed plus 2x to the 3 halves power. It could be anything of this form. You, think you can dream up an infinite number of, of functions that look like this. Um, I'll rewrite it as the negative 3 halves power. And just like we did above, we're going to take the derivative of the outside function. Well, the outside function is something to the negative 3 halves power. So the negative 3 halves comes down. And we subtract one from our power, so we get that to the negative 5 halves. But now we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of, of 3x cubed is 9x squared. And the derivative of 2x is 2. Okay, And this is the derivative. We could rewrite that if we wanted to as 9x squared plus 2. 
Okay, let's see, we'd have a negative three times that on top. And that's all over two times the quantity three x cubed plus two x to the five halves power. Okay, so it's a pretty complicated function and your, your derivative also is, is gonna turn out to be pretty complicated. But we can do it with the chain rule. Now in physics, I just wanna give a quick example of, of why this is useful for physics. Um, harmonic motion. This is the case where we have sines and cosines as our solution for the position of something bouncing on a spring. Okay, so if we look at this, okay, if our general solution is if we choose the sine one, we have an amplitude times sine of omega t plus a phase angle, the outside function is what? Well, the outside function is the sine. The inside function is omega t plus a constant, plus that phase angle. So what we have then for the chain rule, chain rule says if we want to find the derivative of that position equation, which would turn out to be the velocity, um, we have to take the derivative of the outside function. Well, the derivative of a sine is cosine. Okay. And then we have to multiply it by the derivative of the inside function with respect to time. Well, omega is a constant and phi is a constant, so derivative of phi goes away, and the derivative of omega t is just omega. And what we're left with is amplitude times um, the angular frequency times cosine. Well, what's the acceleration? We'd have to take the derivative of our velocity that we just found. Okay, well, the derivative of your outside function, which is cosine now, is negative sine. And we have to multiply that by the derivative of the inside function, which is omega t plus phi again. And so we just get a factor of omega once again. And now we have the acceleration equation. And this is something that we've, we've seen in class. So again, I hope this helps. Um, chain rule is a nice, relatively simple rule. Once you get a couple of examples under your belt, and get a little bit of practice. And again, it's the derivative of an outside function times the derivative of the inside function. And you can start to work on these more complicated critters, um, which we, we will see from time to time in a physics class. So I hope this helps. And until next time, we'll see you later.